What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, Today's guest is no different. I'm going to introduce formerly Reed Tracy with Hay House in a second. And Reed, I always like to look back at other guests um, that kind of relate to this particular interview. And I was thinking, who are some of the cool authors uh, I've had on the podcast before? And uh, Perry Marshall wrote 80-20 Sales and Marketing. Uh, Hel, Hel Elrod wrote The Miracle Morning. You can check that, that episode out. John Rulin of Giftology uh, and Gino Wickman of Traction. And there would be no conversation without Brian Kurtz uh, of Over Deliver, who wrote Over Deliver, who, thank you, Brian, for introducing today's guest, uh, Reed Tracy, to both of us. And we're going to dig in a little bit about why, why Brian Kurtz, right? Because it, when I think of Hay House, I think of, you know, the uh, Wayne Dyers of the world, the Joe Dispenza's of the world. And so Brian Kurtz, uh, I usually don't you know, lump him in with that category. So we'll talk about that. Um, before I introduce Reed, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. And um, Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream relationships by helping you run your podcast. You know, Reed, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And, you know, with a podcast over the past 10 years, I can profile the people I love and admire and the companies and and have them tell their stories. So if you are out there and you've thought of doing a podcast, I think every business should have a podcast. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com and and check out more. Um, Reed Tracy is the president and CEO of Hay House. And they're one of the largest, most influential self-empowerment publishing companies in the world. And He's been there for the past 30 years. Reed's played a crucial role in the strategic development of authors like Dr. Wayne Dyer, Dr. Christian Northrup, Jerry and Esther Hicks, and many, many more. And also responsible for establishing Hay House's offices in New York, London, Sydney, New Delhi. And he's also the president of the Hay Foundation, which is a nonprofit foundation founded by uh, Louise Hay, uh, dedicated to the empowerment of women, children, and animals. So Reed, thanks for joining me. Good to be here. Good to so be here. you too. I, I have to know. So why Brian Kurtz? Yeah. Well, Brian's a great guy. He has a, a amazing business history. We're good friends. We're in a mastermind together with um, Jeff Walker. And when we started our, he was taught. Brian was talking about doing a book and. He has a lot of history and a lot of information to share. And he was talking to me about possible places to get it published. And when he first started talking about it, um, Hay House wasn't really doing business books. But a couple of years ago, we started, we decided to start a, a business imprint here at Hay House. It's called Hay House Business, nice and simple. And we do a lot of the biggest names in um, internet entrepreneurs, uh, which not doesn't necessarily fit Brian, but Brian is all about connecting with people, marketing and all that sort of thing. And I knew that one of the first books we could do should be from him. And he had this book over deliver that he had just about finished. And he said, okay, now I need to find a publisher. And I said, how about us? And he said, okay. And so we, we published the book. It's people love the book. It's, it's one of those books that keep people keep buying over years and years. And, and Brian's a a great guy and a great person to be one of the first business books we did here at Hay House. I mean, he truly read, as you know, him truly lives over deliver, you know, that's just kind of who he is. That's his way of life. Um, who are some of the other business books that um, we could point to uh, from Hay House also? I think Jim Quick was one of them. Yeah, we did Limitless with Jim mm-hmm. Quick, a big bestseller last year, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Russell Brunson, who does Click Funnels. Um, Dan Sullivan, we did a book called Who Not How. I love that book. That's a great one. 
yeah super successful um we yeah we're gonna be do we published ryan levesque i don't know if you know him of app. course i've had ryan levesque on the podcast yeah yeah so he's we do him um we have we're gonna be doing jeff walker's book shortly victoria labalm uh we have lots and lots and lots of different people. Uh, most of them, like I said, in the internet entrepreneur space. So. How does it work, Reed, to, for an author to work with you? At what point in the process do they have to have a finished book at that point? How does it work for an author? Uh, I mean, basically, we pick the books that we're going to do. We, for business books, we do 12 a year, one a month. And so it's very competitive, um, but we choose the books from a book proposal. So you create a book proposal um, and then we look at the books from the, that point and then decide which ones we're going to do. So, and a lot of it depends on your audience that you have already. And because publishers are looking for authors that have an audience that they can bring to start buying the book because you need an audience to start with. So the word of mouth starts, you know, and that's really everyone buys books by recommendations from their friends, from business associates or whatever. Um, but you usually hear, oh, you know, like I mentioned, who, not how you go. Oh, I like that book. You've probably told people about it. And totally. Kind yeah. of how, how the books get out there. And that's what we're looking for. Um, and so that's, yeah, I'm in several masterminds for businesses, you know, like to help build a business, you get a lot like who not has a good example. When we launched that book, we sold like 20,000 in the first month of the book between eBooks and physical books. And Dan got 800 new clients for his, uh, wow. um, things, which, which people pay ten to thirty thousand dollars for, so you guys can do the math. That was a nice seven-figure boost to his business from the book. So, yeah, and and you know, I, I was I'm in several masterminds, and that book, uh, the specific the Who Not How one, has been thrown around several times in in the mastermind groups, and I recommended it for sure. I think he wrote it with Benjamin Hardy yeah. um, as well, and so I'm curious, so. You, you choose one a month, right? What do you look for? How do you choose the book? Audience is one factor. What, what are the other factors you look for? And then like the unique idea like that the, you bring to the book that's different from what's already out there. Um, and everyone kind of does this because your story is unique, your business is unique, and we're just looking for ones that people are going to be able to use and benefit their business as well. So. That part's a little trickier. We're looking for people that can write or have a writer that can write because we need the book to be completed. So when you do a book proposal, you give a couple sample chapters to show that you're going to be able to write the book or a lot of people use writers. That's fine. I always tell people that, you know, there's an author of the book and then a writer and they don't have to be the same person. And the author yeah. is the one with the ideas and the thoughts and the process and the writer puts it down for everyone to read. So, yeah. So audience, unique idea. And I think, you know, with the who, not how, I believe it was kind of like this collaboration between Tucker Max, Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. It sounded like from, from it. And, and Tucker has been in the, in the space and the, you know, the author and book world for a long time as well. Yeah. So yeah, Tucker. <clears throat> so basically we met, all of us at Joe Polish's mastermind, we were speaking at his 100K mastermind, like he invited us to come and talk to that group about books. And um, it was, the we, well, Ben was there. I mean, he wasn't there to talk about books, but he is an author and he was there, I think, to give another talk or he's part of that group or something. And then Tucker, I, and another agent um, all were talking about books and then Dan was there too. So we, we all connected and mm. had dinner and then decided um, to do this. It was birthed. Yeah, ben and Dan had already decided they wanted to do it. They just needed to find the right publisher. And that's a long story, but it all worked out. And 
Tucker's kind of the agent for it and that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and he helps Ben, I think, with a little of the editorial. But yeah. Ben's a great writer. So totally. So audience, unique idea, any other pieces that you look for? Because you probably get a lot for every you know one proposal, you probably get lots and lots of proposals. You've probably gone through many throughout the years. What else do you look for? Yeah. I mean, those are the main thing. And then what we do from that is then have a conversation with the author, make sure we're a good fit for each other. And since we only do 12 business books a year, we're very selective on what we pick, how we pick them. Um, so we try to make, you know, as many of them successful and we've had a lot of success in the, in that category. I mean, Russell Brunson's traffic secrets was a bestseller, New York times and wall street journal bestseller last year as well. And we did three, we republished his other two books that he had and we have a new book coming out from him in 2022. All right, cool. We're doing a book a year with Dan Sullivan. And, and so that's going to be, um, so every fall we're going to have a new book from them, Ben and Dan. So for the next 10 years. So you guys can all look forward to seeing those. So. No, they're great. I mean, I think I've, I've purchased all of his books on audible before and, and some, you know, some are shorter, uh, books and then the who not house a little bit longer, but it's not that long. So it's very, very valuable. So I encourage anyone to check it out. Um, what about launch? So you choose, there's a, there's a really competitive process. You choose one a month. Now you're ready to launch. What do you do to get it out there? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, the author that one of the things we're doing is picking authors with an audience. So the author's We'll email their email list. They, if they have podcasts. Hopefully they learn from you how to do a podcast. <laughs> they get, get that going, build an audience there. And then usually they do other people's podcasts, right? So they do like your podcast, their friends' podcast, ever, you know, different ones for the audience they're trying to reach. That's like the new radio shows and yeah. used to be radio shows and TV. Nowadays, there's not so much TV. The radio shows, no one listens to the radio, so everyone's listening to podcasts. So it aims in that direction. Some people have good social media followings. Um, we have a whole process that we teach them how to do different launches and a lot of people give bonuses of if they pre-order the book or order it right when it comes out. Because what you're trying to do is get enough people to read it and tell their friends to build a critical mass so that you get that word of mouth, which that's what we all want. So it yeah. keeps it selling. So the launch is to get enough people to read it that it keeps selling. And then you just mention it every couple of weeks after that, you know, to remind the new people that are coming into your world that you have a book out there and it keeps selling and that sort of thing. So um, a lot of it, you know, people have their friends promote it and talk about it. And, you know, there's not, there's not a huge amount of money in books. So it's a lot of to do with friends and, and it's more the back end of the people you get into your business that buy other things for, from you than the money you're going to make from the book. So even the biggest selling authors, are making a small portion of their income right. from books, but it does build the rest of their business. So. Yeah, they may have do consulting, they may have a course, they may have a group program, they may have another business, and it all funnels into those other things that they're doing. And, and obviously, if you discover someone's methodology and you love it, you're going to see what else do they have to offer and, and go down that path. Right. right. It is gives you tons of credibility and that sort of thing as well. So. You know, you mentioned it. Yeah. People go on the podcast circuit as well. And that podcast circuit or launching the emails just gives them momentum that tends to carry through. And you mentioned something, Reed, I'd love to hear more about is bonuses. I would love to hear some of the killer bonuses you've seen people offer throughout the years. And that could be go to the, the Wayne Dyers or the business one, whatever because I remember, I think it was like Tim Ferriss released one of his books and, and Gary Vee released some of his books. And if you buy a certain number, you get all these interesting bonuses. And I always love the creative ways people come up with bonuses. So what have you seen that has been creative uh, bonuses that people have come up with? 
Yeah, well, I mean, there's all different ones. I mean, people like Russell Brunson, when he first launched his first book, he gave away a Ferrari, you know, or something. To That's the, pretty creative. Uh, yeah. I think Jeff Walker won the Ferrari from all the partners that promoted his book for him. So that's a pretty good one. Um, people do, you know, like, I think like trips to Ecker Island and that kind of stuff. But the main ones that really make a difference are like where you they get access to you, the author, either in a talk that you're giving or something that's valuable. The big mistake I think people make is they don't want to give away their best stuff in the bonuses. But that really makes a difference to give something good that they really want. So a lot of times they'll buy the book to get the bonus. And then it's really up to you as the author to get them to read the book. So some of the bonuses that I think are most effective are with you going through the book with them, um, with the reader and say like, you know, not reading it to them, but explaining why chapter three is so important. And then maybe mention, be sure to read chapter four and six and those kind of things. So a lot of times like Brendan Burchard's one of our authors, very successful, like high performance habits he, when he launched that. Um, he had a whole like four week program where he worked with them on high performance habits and really got the book out there in practice. People saw how it could affect them in their lives and started mentioning it to other people. So those are effective. I mean, each one is kind of unique and different to, to the, the author and the skills they have and the audience that they're trying to reach. So. Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that, Reed, because I know one, you've been doing this for decades and two, so you have like personal stories, but two, you're also in with some of the best and brightest and Jeff Walker's group in the launch. So you've seen yeah. what the, people are doing in the creative ways. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I love what you shared because it's like sometimes the most obvious thing we're thinking of all the, the fancy, oh, there may be a car or a trip, but some people just want more of the same and they want more access to the author. Yeah, usually those are the best ones. I yeah. mean, like the cars and trips might be for the partners. Like if you're used doing some kind of partner launch where you're getting them the mail and for leads or book sales and you really want to get people fired up because there's, like I said, there's not a lot of money because it's a $20 book. Like how much can you make? It's not like selling a $2,000 course or something like that. So yeah. I remember I was talking to, this was a while ago, Jason Gaynor to Mastermind Talks. And he, I believe early on, I don't know if it was his first Mastermind Talks, bought a, a ton of books from Tim Ferriss. And the bonus was to have him speak at the event. And that's how he had Tim Ferriss speak at, I don't know if it was one of his first events, but he bought a, a ton of books. You know? Yeah, people will definitely like, especially the super well-known authors, like they want access to them. So that's another way to, to get it going, you know, like, oh, Gary V will come and speak at your mastermind if you buy a thousand books, you know, or something, you know, so, and people do that, like speakers a lot of times will say, you know, I'll reduce my speaker fee, but you have to give everyone a book and that sort of thing. When they're trying to make bestseller lists at the beginning, um, there's all different e-book e campaigns you can do, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do to launch books. And, and, um, and it's really good just to watch other people in your same industry when they release a book, what's effective for them. And then it kind of evolves over time. So what worked two years ago might not work now. So you want to see what people are doing now. So yeah, I an interview, I interviewed Dave Woodward of, of ClickFunnels and he shared some of the really interesting stuff they do in their book funnel process. So I, I encourage anyone to check out that episode because he kind of walks walk through from you know the webinar to the book to the audio version and they're they're masters. Right, that's yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously click funnel. So they, they, yeah, they, well, they have the back end to, to run. Yeah, they, and they talk about it in traffic secrets. He explains it all too, like how they use their book funnels. And then after you release the book, how you can create funnels. And that's 
like Brendan Burchard has done that extremely well for us and Dean Graziosi um, when we did his book and it's he did it, some really good funnels for it. Um, so where they buy the book for $10 or $8 or $7 or whatever the amount is and then have a back end where they sell courses or memberships and that. Yeah. Yeah, Reed, like I'm the best person to be on people's lists because I am I am a heavy consumer of books and audiobooks, but also I just like to experience their their process. So I will literally buy their book, I will buy the upsells, I will buy <laughs> everything because from my personal standpoint, but also just to see how it works. And yeah. the best way to do it is just go actually go through it as a customer yourself. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like the audios, we have the Hay House Unlimited audio app. So if you want all the Hay House business books and the self-help books in one place, we we have it all there <laughs> where you get access to every book ever published from Hay House that's on audio wow. in one place. It's And it's cheap too, like $9 a month or $59 a year. And you can have every self-help book, every business book, every meditation, everything in one place. There's 30,000 hours of audios in there. So So if you have a little bit of time with uh, time (laughs) set aside, I'm curious of why you decided to do that. The unlimited audio app. That's it's an amazing deal. Um, I'll have to check it out. I'm a big, you know, I, I probably listen to two to five books per week on audible. Um, and so I'll have to check out the app. What made you decide to do that unlimited audio app? Yeah, well, we, one of the, so we sell all our stuff on Audible as well. And it's fine for consumers and the way that they have it set up, but the actual deal for the publishers isn't great. You know, you get a very, very low percentage of the revenue. It's the opposite of eBooks and eBooks, the publisher gets the majority of the revenue and audio, they get a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to find other ways to give the audio to our audience at a reasonable price. And we have people who love Hay House books and love Mm -hmm. Hay House authors and our audios. We've been doing audio since 1987. So we're one of the first people actually to do audios. Um, we had some of the first audios in bookstores back then where, before anyone else even had audio. I had the Wayne Dyer cassette tapes at home. Yeah, part. there you yeah. go. See? So we were we had Wayne Dyer, Louise Haig, and Bernie Siegel were the people oh, yeah. we started out with. And um, so um, we had all this audio and we you know, a lot of people listen to it on Audible, but we wanted to get another audience and we just wanted to give people access to more of it because um, for just a flat fee you can get access to all the Wayne Dyer audios we've ever done and you can and people just check it out and we give them 30 days free or 14 days free depending on the different offers we have and people are able to get in there try it out and it's a great app like it's easy to use and it's um, and people love it. And so that we have, a, we have, we launched it about 11 months ago or 10 and a half months ago. And we have over 30,000 subscribers. Um, and, and like, it's kind of like I was saying, word of mouth, people are telling their friends, try it out. We have lots of meditations and the things to help you with your sleep. If you want that. And we have 52 morning and evening meditations so you can get your day started right, yeah. end your day right. But um, it's really just to give our customers easy access to everything Hay House, basically. Yeah. We do like 10 new audios every month at least. So you get all those. And so there's there's a never ending supply. <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing. I'm I'm curious of that as an undertaking because that's a big decision for a company because it's a lot. It's a you know as a technology undertaking. Yeah. And and by the way, so people, if you want to check it out, you can go to HayHouse.com and check it out. And they it, they have a 14 day trial with unlimited access that mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go sign up for for sure because I spend way more per like day or week on audible than the whole month on hay house so um (laughs) i wish you would have told me this like 10 years ago because i bought (laughs) read one of those k 
converters that you put the audio cassette in and it converts it to digital because I wanted wow. to preserve all my audio cassette tapes, the Wayne Dyer ones and everything else. Yeah. And you would have saved me a lot of time because that was not easy. <laughs> yeah. So um, why, you know, what was the undertaking like of this technology? Uh, yeah, so I mean, it was, we used a third party to help us do it. it. You know, it took us about a year to put yeah. it all together cost like seven figures to do the development and it's a never when you do an app for anyone that's ever done one we've done over a hundred of them here at hey so i know a little bit about the apps and um it's a it's the one thing to develop it but then you keep making changes so we're on our fifth version yeah, it's of, not a set it and forget it type of situation yeah so it's a it, there's a lot of costs involved but it's great for the customers and really like um, we just wanted to give an easy access to more of the product that we have here at Hay House. And, yeah. um, and in the future, we're going to be adding audio from other companies. We, we are in talks with some people right now to do that. Um, and so it's, it's really evolving and it's, and, it's be, and it's fun because audio is something you can do quick. So we can get an idea, release it in a month or two, whereas books, it takes years to get them out. Yeah. You know? So you, you get the idea, you start writing it and two or three years later, it's yeah. out in people's hands. So well, I've definitely spent more on the audible books than I would for a year on your subscription. The same authors that I bought on audible, that would be a year on Hay House. So I'm definitely going to be, and there's uh, a bunch of unique things in our app that you can't get anywhere else too, like teaching programs and things mm. like that, that aren't even on audible or anywhere else. And we have a bunch of exclusive audios in there too, but mainly it's stuff you can get everywhere else. It's just a lot cheaper at Hay House. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you, you mentioned Joe Dispenza, he's in there and Deepak Chopra's in there and Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Gabby Bernstein, um, Jim Quick, who we mentioned, Who Not How, who we mentioned, all those, everyone we mentioned's in there. <laughs> so That's awesome. Russell Brunson. So there's I'm going to like, check it out. You can, um, you, you could just on the business stuff, there's like 20 or 30 programs. So that's hundred hours. So that'll keep you busy for a while. Totally. Um, I, I want to go through, cause you have some really, you've really worked with these authors on a very close basis. And I'd love to hear some of the stories and lessons, but what's the, I'm curious, Reed, have you approached, I know you get lots of proposals. Were there any authors that you've brought on that you were like, we need to have this author and you ended up approaching them instead of vice versa? Yeah. I mean, lots of them we approach. I mean, like Esther Hicks, who did Abraham. Um, I don't know if you know her, but she's a big author of ours. And our very first book we did with her is called Ask and It's Given. It's a huge classic in the self-help world. Um, we approached them. They had self-published some books, and we got them. Um, Greg Braden, that's we got, and um, Bruce Lipton, and um, mm. lots of our authors. Um, when I started at Hay House, basically everyone we approached because we had three books and I did three books and four takes. You know, when I started at Hay House. Um, in 1988, that's where we were. And we had like a million dollars in revenue and we were just a beginning company. And then over the years, we grew to do a lot more. We have a hundred million dollars in revenue now. So it's changed amazing. greatly over the time. We, for the first 10 years at AOS in 1988, when I started, um, our biggest book was You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay, and she was on Oprah and Donahue in the same week in, in March of, 2000, of 1988, and, um, and it became a big, huge hit. And that was like, at that time, Donahue was bigger than Oprah, so that was actually the big show was Donahue, and we were on this little upstart Oprah. And then, That's uh, amazing to think uh, back at that, right? Yeah, and so we the book went on the bestseller list. It became a big hit, but it took us ten years before our next best-selling book. Um, so we, uh, you know, we were doing anything we could with the, all the different authors. Lots of audio, lots of things that no one else wanted to do. 
um, just look like our very first book with Wayne Dyer was called Everyday Wisdom was just quotes, a, a book of quotes, because we couldn't afford to get big advances. And he was getting, you know, seven bigger advances from publishers, even though I was talking to Wayne every single day. And um, Hay House paid for Wayne Dyer's very well in partnership with Wayne, his very first PBS special that was selling tons of books for Harper. Um, we were just working with people any way we could. We did lectures, uh, visions of the future, and I can do it lectures like 30, 40 a year with a bunch of different authors. And we got to know people and met them and kind of like you were, you know, like Brian Kurtz over deliver. Like we, I would pick them up like at the days when you could walk to the gate at the airport and I would meet them at the gate at the airport and then drive them to the hotel and then bring them to the event and then bring them back. You're like their personal concierge. Center. Yeah, personal. And, you know, no, no one knew that I even worked at AS and it, that I was running it for Louise, but like, so. They thought um, you were just a driver? Really? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they knew I worked there, the authors, but no yeah. one else did. I used to sell books in the back of the lectures and help, you know, all that sort of thing. And then we would just build up a relationship and get little products from them and things no one would want. Or we'd create some idea of doing a gift product or something and then eventually we were able to you know sign some of these authors and but a lot of them you know we helped grow them from nothing like you mentioned Dr. Joe Dispenza like he had one book with health communications and we always I had always watched him and I liked that book and liked him and so we approached him years later and said look if you're ever gonna write another book we would love to do it and we ended up publishing breaking the habit of being yourself which is a huge international bestseller and then we did his next book you are the placebo and then uh, it, and it's uh you know and then he just became huge all over the world but when we signed him he wasn't big and you, you know, we talked before we got started, we were talking about Deepak Chopra and you said, do you have any stories about him? And, and it's good. I have a great story about Deepak. So before anyone knew who Deepak was, um, he had, a, he, he had um, this um, retreat center that he had in Massachusetts and Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer had both been there and met him and liked him and had read some of his books and audio programs and different things like that and so we said hey Deepak do you want to come speak at one of our events you know and he goes sure you know my fee's like a thousand dollars and we said okay we'll give you three thousand if you want to come and speak for us and uh it's a good negotiation and, and Wayne and 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 Louise like I think Louise went on before him and started talking him up and saying he's the greatest thing and she loves him and like we sold out of all of his books before he even got on stage and no one had ever heard him really speak before at that point and and he came up and gave a speech and then Wayne was after him and I remember at the dinner afterwards we were all talking and he's like well Wayne how can I improve my speaking and Wayne like worked with him for months and years after that wow. to help him become a good speaker and you it's know, a real that, community. And that's yeah. what I hear about Hay House is the community aspect of it. I mean, the authors are help each other, it sounds like. Yeah, we call it the Hay House family and everyone works together and helps each other. And it's a like a unique publisher in the sense like we help the authors build their whole business, even if we're not part of it, which no other publisher does. And we, uh, you know, we know about internet marketing, which no other publisher does. And like we are, one of our new authors is uh, Mel Robbins. I don't know if you know about her, but yep. we're going to publish our first book with her this fall. And we are meeting with her and her agent, and we we're talking about the promotion and the launch and the bonuses. And the, uh, the agent goes, oh, my God, you know, I do these meetings every day with all my authors, and you're the only publisher that ever really has understood any of it. <laughs> so... 
it's uh it's like that and we we do like masterminds with our authors teach them how to do membership programs or online courses to make money for them not for hay house and they're it's a unique place it's a different yeah. than a lot of things so well, i love what you said reed about you know what stuck out to me is relationships hustle and creativity because listen like you were building those relationships picking them up from the airport dropping them off like you know, just doing whatever it took and the creativity of, even if you wanted to work with a Wayne Dyer who is seven figure advances or whatever, you just found a way to work with him with the quote book that was totally creative and you are able to work with someone like and help them. I'd love to hear, cause you, I think you were talking to Wayne Dyer, I don't know, every week, every day. What were some of the, the fun Wayne Dyer stories? What was he like? Yeah, he was great. I mean, I literally did talk to him every day. My wife will tell you, he used to call us on vacation and everything. He'd answer Wayne, you know, what the heck, give us a break, all that. But we, and everyone became good friends with him. Like it's a, the classic story of him with my kids. Or he always taught him um, the Great Lakes homes, you know, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. So that's uh, the Great Lakes. And he always would, every time he saw them, which was lots of times over the years, he'd say, what are the Great Lakes? Let me hear. <laughs> Things like that. And we went on cruises and trips around the world and tours. And um, I used to go to Maui but several times a year and hang out with him and his family and I knew all his kids and everybody you know so we i mean he there's just so many like all the different stories that he tells in his audios and pbs shows and all that side, sort of thing so it's i mean everything that you see in public and the books and the pbs and the lectures was how he was every day so i mean it, it, was, it was does great. any anything stick out from him i know you talked to him quite frequently, um, any specific lesson that he gave to you or any specific story he told you that you still, that you still think about often? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's a specific story, but it's just more of like how he treated everybody great. And like everyone from like the waitress to the flight attendant to, you know, when his suitcases came off the uh, you know, thing at the airport, he would grab them and put them on the thing or, you know, he, he wasn't like thinking he was better than everybody else. And I think that was a big lesson from him. I mean, it's all his, you know, little quotes that he has, like, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change from the power of intention and his 10 secrets for success and inner peace. One of them is don't die with your music still in you you know, like those kind of things. And I was actually, I, we did a movie with Wayne Dyer called The Shift in 2000. I watched that, yeah. Yeah, and I just rewatched it last week. I mean, it's still, the lessons are so good. It's really all about going from ambition to meaning in your life and just all his insights and thoughts and ideas. And and it's like all the stuff from Wayne, like for me, it wasn't like I was like a big fan of his before he came to Hay House. I always tell everybody like I get uh, most of my knowledge from Hay House is by osmosis, just being around everyone and it kind of soaks in. And then someone says, what do you think I should do? And I end up giving advice from one of our authors without even knowing it. And it was like that with him just hanging out and seeing all the things he's done and do, done yeah. it and that sort of stuff. So. Reed, I think your, your story of how you got started in this is interesting. And it's not like you set out, like, I want to be in the book publishing world, right? I mean, I think you start off as an accountant, right? Yep. I was a CPA for basically a CPA in our CPA firm I worked for was across the hall from Hay House. And um, and when I, as I mentioned earlier, Louise was on Oprah and Donnie in the same week and their whole business exploded and they walked across the hall and say, what do we do? Like, what about this and that? And so they the the partner said, well, you know, we, we you got to um, 
you know, get all your books in order and we'll help you. And there's the taxes and we can help you set up a foundation, which we still have the Hay Foundation, where Louise left every penny that she made her whole time at Hay House into that foundation. And we give it to charities and things like that. But um, and then they assigned me and two other people to work on it. And it <clears throat> and, uh, and at that time, I had never even heard of self-help or Louise Hay or anything. And it was a tough time in the world at that time because it was right in the middle of the AIDS epidemic or the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. And Louise Hay was the center point of it all, like helping people. Um, even the president of the United States at that time wouldn't even say the words AIDS, say the word AIDS. and. Um, and so it was like almost, it was honestly was scary like to go in there because of all the different people there were, you didn't know anything about it going in and out. Like we, I used to go in there, it's embarrassing to say this a little bit now, but I used to go in there, like do the thing and then run out and wash my hands and like do these different things. And uh, well, it's kind of I- like, you know, when, when, the coronavirus came out like you just have little information so you, people don't know how you transmit it they don't know how it's passed until they get deeper in the research you know so right. exactly yeah. and and louise started with three people in her living room and by 1988 she had a thousand people a week at a park in west hollywood called the hay ride they used to call it and it was just basically a support group say doing taking a positive approach to this this situation like she always used to say it's not we're not going to do ain't it awful we're going to do a positive approach and and do the best we can and a lot of people did die from it but a lot of people didn't die from it and she was showing you know that it's possible to live and make it through and then you know obviously they had the medical advances that have helped but um so it was a you know, it was a weird time and and all of that was new to me. And um, but somehow, like Louise, like would always say, you know, like your thoughts create your life and you can change things by the way you think. And I, you know, I thought it was a little weird, but I used to tell my friends like the lady's real weird and she has these <laughs> things like you can't heal yourself by what you think. But she's not like trying to sell it. Like she really believes it. Like she's not like doing any of this. So there's something about her and all that. And then they needed someone to do the accounting. They got tired of paying all the bills of the CPA firm. And I got tired of doing public accounting, which I knew I didn't always want to do, but I wanted to get my CPA thing and all that. And then, um, so I just took that job. And even the partners at the CPA firm said, look, you're good at accounting. We have all these. They try clients. to talk you out of it. You could go to work at like these movie studios and movie stars and construction companies and all this. And I like, I wouldn't pick this place. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know. There's something and I'll try it. And though there's lots and lots of stories about it but obviously it all yeah. worked out uh, over this time so. it's interesting Reed. i wonder what the authors would say about this because it's it's crazy how i don't know if you call it dumb luck i don't know if you call it fate i don't know what you call it but like if your office wasn't across the hall and you didn't end up working for that place you would have never been on this lifelong journey at the hay house so it's just crazy how some of these decisions take us on this path, right? Yeah. This journey. Um, and, and you mentioned that with uh, Louise, Hey, you know, one of my, one of my favorite books. Um, so my background is in biochemistry and as a chiropractor. And uh, one of my favorite books is by Candace Pert, the molecules of emotion. And yeah. she's a, you know, American neuroscientist. And she basically talks about the actual physiology of our thoughts, you know, yeah. and it's really interesting. You know, yeah, we so. did a book with Candace. Oh, I, you did? Okay. I knew her too. Yeah. yeah. So you, her, her research she was doing and all that. It's fascinating stuff. Um, Reed, first of all, I have one last question, but but I just want to thank you. Thanks for the work that you do and the work you in the Hay House put out in the world. It's um, I followed it for for several decades, and it's uh, 
honor to have you on and talk about it firsthand. So thank you. Everyone check out hayhouse.com. Check out their unlimited access um, audio app, which uh, I will definitely be checking out after this now that I found out <laughs> about it. And uh, last question, Reed, is I'd love to hear, you know, obviously she was a, an amazing woman, a giving woman and set up the, the foundation. I'm wondering what um, has come out of the foundation, if there's, um, you know, out of the, the people you've helped, just to give people an idea of what the foundation does and who they help. Yeah. So we, we kind of, we aim for certain, um, like Louise always loved to help like the smaller charities that don't spend all their money on getting more money. And so like the, the money goes really to help um, the individual people that are doing it. One of the big charities that we support is one called Solutions for Change. And uh, what is here in um, San Diego, it's in Vista actually. And what they do is um, help get homeless families off the street. So mothers usually and their kids, sometimes mothers and fathers and their kids. And, um, and they make them get off of any drugs or alcohol to come in. They make them have a job. They make them pay a small amount of rent for the place. And it's a hundred day program. And if you make it through the hundred days, they have like a 95% success rate to mm. pay off being homeless. But one of the problems that they have is that they can't get any money from the government because the government doesn't give any money to help homeless people if you make them get off drugs, you know? So they, the government doesn't see any correlation between being on drugs and being homeless, but this place does. And they're able to see that, you know, you just clean them up. And it's amazing just talking to these people. And really, um, well, the reason why it's like these kind of charities that help kids, I see it as helping kids. Obviously, it helps the parents as well, but um, are so important for like the Hay Foundation is Louise, when she was 13 years old, she was homeless and she lived, she was from California, but she was like ended up in Chicago. Um, by the time she was 16 or 15 or 16, she ended up having a baby, find, found a home for the baby, all that sort of thing. So she kind of went through this journey before she became Louise Hay. Mm. And so we're, we're big on helping those kind of organizations. We help um, people like we have, yeah, like there's a bunch of different ones. We have like one of them in Oakland helps people like people that can't afford to get alternative therapies for like cancer and things like that, which obviously is big for the Hay House fans. We, and like you said before, we help people like animals. Louise always loved helping animals. So we do things that do that. Um, but we have a short list of people like we, we've always helped like getting food to people. So like AIDS Project LA and um, some of the mama's kitchen here in San Diego and different things like that. So, but it's, we give away like millions of dollars each year and try to, you know, help as many people as we can. So Reed, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone check out hayhouse.com, check out more episodes of the podcast and spreadinsider.com and check out everything else. Thanks everyone. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.